Well, ladies and gentlemen, live on HBO pay-per-view from T-Mobile Arena here in the entertainment capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada. A very good evening and welcome to an exciting night of World Championship Boxing, all brought to you by Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions and presented by Tecate, the official beer of boxing. Sponsored by Hennessy. Never stop, never settle. O'Reilly Auto Parts, better parts, better prices every day. Fred Loya Insurance, put Fred in your corner. Interjet Airlines, como quieres viajar, fly your way to Mexico with Interjet Airlines. The major motion picture, Venom, starring Tom Hardy in theaters worldwide on October 5th and Capitol Holdings. And out five fans, we are set to go with our bout opener. Ten rounds, this in the super flyweight division. Brought to you by Golden Boy Promotions and Triple G Promotions in association with Taken Promotions and Zanford Promotions. Your three judges scoring at ringside, Tim Cheatham, Eric Cheek, and Chris Flores. When the action begins inside the ring, referee in charge, Robert Byrne. Introducing to first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black and gold. He weighed in officially 116 pounds. As a professional in 31 bouts, he has 25 victories, five defeats, one draw with 14 wins coming by way of knockout. Introducing the former WBO minimum, WBO junior flyweight champion of the world, Desde Ciudad de Mexico, Mexico. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner. Wearing tonight black with red, he weighed in 114 and three quarter pounds. This 48 fight veteran holds a professional record. 46 victories, including 38 knockouts. Just two defeats, he is the former four division world champion, De Managua Nicaragua. Okay, gentlemen, you had your instructions in the dressing room. <clears throat> Recuerda, habla pare, pare no tiene golpes. Protejanse en todo tiempo, obedezcan lo que digo. Caballeros, vámonos a esto. Robert Bird, the third man in the ring. We are ready for our pay-per-view on the night of Canelo and Triple G rematch. This one, Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez, Moises Fuentes. Scheduled. And we are underway. Chocolatito in the black trunks, Moises in the black and white. Chocolatito with a record of 46. And two, 38 KOs, but the big question, of what is left in him after his last two losses that were devastating? Doug, you were there for those, weren't you? I was. I was ringside for the first fight. That was last March inside Madison Square Garden on the undercard of the Gennady Golovkin, Daniel Jacobs show. Uh, it was a sensational fight, but he was dropped early. He was cut early. He was rocked and wobbled, um, fought his way into the fight, and it was a sensational back and forth. Um, from the first round to the 12th round, most observers, at least among the media, believe that Gonzalez had done enough to earn that decision, but he lost a split decision. The WBC, which sanctioned that bout, um, ordered an immediate rematch, and we all saw what happened. That took place at StubHub Center in Carson, California, and Gonzalez did not look like himself as he entered the ring. The confidence was not there. Um, we didn't see the power. We didn't see the technique. Uh, and within four rounds, he was um, he was dropped and then dispatched flat on his back in a manner that made most of us at ringside say, that's it, he's done, he's retired. I remember reading your tweets and your columns, and you're like, maybe it's best that we enjoy Chocolatito, the fighter that we knew, instead of not this done version, but this fighter that it, it was, at that point looked like a shell of himself, Kelly, right? Well, something was missing. Let me tell you what was missing. In the first fight, there was a lot of headbutting, which Chocolatito was cut up pretty bad from. And the second fight, he held his hands higher to avoid the headbutts. So he's doing right bring, now. So when you bring your hands at, is where how you're gonna box. It changes your style. Cause Chocolatito's hands are usually lay underneath his chin, and he moves his head, and he doesn't get hit with punches. But when he has his hands high, like he has them right now, he's trying to avoid the headbutts 
but it's taken away the style of Chocolatito. So he's made to advance, not to be on defense. At one point, he was probably one of the baddest dudes on the planet, right, Doug? You're writing about him? Absolutely. Um, when he was a straw weight and a junior flyweight, I thought he was pound for pound worthy. And he absolutely destroyed his opposition. If he didn't blow him out, he broke him down to late stoppages. Uh, the only fighters that could go the distance with him were very special, like a, a young Juan Francisco Estrada. He took him the distance, and that was a, a great fight that those two waged at 108 pounds in late 2012. Those were really the glory years for Chocolatito, and unfortunately, most boxing fans in America didn't get a chance yeah. to see him. They didn't see him until he had moved up to flyweight and then later junior bantamweight and was showcased on HBO, often packaged with Triple G. Chocolatito, 31 years old. Let's see. He can still be a force in the division. First round winding down in Las Vegas. Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez, Moises Fuentes, inside the T Mobile Arena. Tiempo! How do you feel? He wants to counter punch. Vamos a trabajar vivito. Ya lo ya lo sintió. Es lo que quiere hacer que tú tires para contra golpear. Vivito pica abajo, pica arriba. Él va a bajar las manos. Esa volado. Esa volado va a entrar. Respire bien. Quiero que que tires más ya para aquí, pa pa. Y el López. Y el López, el López te lo quiero que me lo tires fuerte como habíamos dicho. Throw that up, throw strong. Y el Oper quiero que me lo tires fuerte. ¿Cómo lo sientes? Él está con mucha precaución. Le agarraste un buen volado que sí dijo. Quiero que sigas insistiendo. Ahí está la cuetita. Dame, 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 dame. Vivo, eh. Vivo, hermano. No te me confíes. Managua, Nicaragua Zone. Román Chocolatito González. Moises Fuentes. In the white trunks, Fuentes, 30 years old. A few years ago, Fuentes stopped Ivan Calderon, the Puerto Rican. And Calderon never fought after that. Fuentes, reading one of the Mexican newspapers, said, I know what Chocolatito is. With well, the Chocolatito we're going to see tonight is not the one that he was a couple years ago. I made Ivan Calderon retire. I'm going to make Chocolatito retire. I'm not trash talking him. It's just a fact. It's reality. You know, he's I'm right about that. I'm not scared of him. He's right about that. Um, Calderon, a Puerto Rican legend. Chocolatito Gonzalez, a Nicaraguan legend. But after a long career, if, a, if, a, if even a great fighter sticks around too long, he can lose to anybody. And Fuentes is not just anybody. He's a former title holder himself. He's been world class for many years. I'm seeing blood from his nose and cut around the, the left eye. But I'm also not seeing the kind of uh, pressure and volume punching that we're used to seeing from Chocolatito, although he put together a nice combination just then. Yeah, he could say he's not scared of him, but it doesn't look like it right now because Chocolatito's coming up strong, Kevin. And there's no head movement for Chocolatito. That's the major thing that's missing. Chocolatito attacks and then he defends. Attacks, defends. He's attacking and he's holding his hands up in a position like Winky Wright used to do and catch punches. Right there, Chocolatito would slip a punch and counter. That's what's missing out of Chocolatito. Chocolatito. That's the magic. Landing that straight jab to the right eye of Moises Fuentes was cut on the eyebrow. And that definitely, that's a, that's a cut from punches, yep. Beto. That, I didn't see a clash of heads. Oh. And that's a lot of blood, and it's obviously bothering Fuentes. Quickly. It, Chocolatito threw a lot more punches in the past. Like right there, he threw two punches, but he would counter again. What's missing is the counters. So the knockout has definitely affected him psychologically. In the past, he'd been going for it. Well, in the past, he would have been pressing from the opening bell, but I tell you what, he's looking excellent in this round, too. He's dominating the round so far. I wonder if Fuentes is kicking himself for not trying to jump on Chocolatito in the first round when maybe he had some doubts. Fuentes' face all bloody, cut from the right eyebrow, bleeding from the nose. A strong round for Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez. Beautiful left hook to the body, and then a hip hook to the head from Chocolatito on the inside. A lot of respect between the two fighters. As Fuentes said, an opportunity to beat Chocolatito does wonders for my career right now, at the age of 30. But right now, it's all Chocolatito controlling the second round, moving around, landing that quick left hook. And no body punching. Where is the body punching? 
from Chocolatito. That's what's missing. Yeah. Gonzalez was known for his body attack. And he's cutting up the face of Fuentes going upstairs exclusively in the second round. Fuentes pawing at that right eye. Discussion. Alfredo Quintana, the cut man for Fuentes, has to work in front of him. No, 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 it's not a cut, but... What do you have? It's cut. Here's nothing. Give him water. Yeah. El protector, juega el protector, hijo, juega el protector. Dame vaselina tantita, es que el otro señor me quitó la vaselina. Hijo, ahí te quiero, ahí, si a veces te, te quedas en las cuerdas, no te sí, me quedes ahí pegado. Fuentes sí, sí, sí. ¿Eh? winds up with the right that's blocked. Oh, that, that could have been a, a clash of heads. No, that was on chocolate. Huh? Well, they both, they, they, both. They, they both, you know, they're, 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 their heads collided. And I do see there the blood is. now trickle, so that was from a head, but it wasn't from a punch. Watch your heads with Robert Bird telling him the referee. We're in the third round, scheduled 4-10 between Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez and Moises Fuentes. Thanks to all of you watching all over the world. Tonight a Canelo Triple G rematch. Moises is the taller, rangier fighter. He looks bigger. I don't know if he's heavier than Chocolatito at this point, but he weighed in heavier than Chocolatito. He came in at 116 pounds. Chocolatito was just under the 115-pound junior bantamweight uh, division limit. I, I think Gonzalez, he's showing some good form. It's just not his vintage form. It's not the pressure, power combinations, body and head, and, and the, the tight defense that we're used to seeing. He's kind of showing us a little, you know, he's boxing a little bit on the outside, picks his spots when to press, picks his spots when to drop the combinations. And Fuentes, to his credit, is trying to mount an attack here in the, in the third round. Fuentes trying to slug with Chocolatito. As you were saying, Kevin, where's the body attack? Nothing for Chocolatito. He's going all upstairs. I see an abandonment of style. I see an abandonment of technique and strategy. Chocolatito usually goes to the body, goes to the head. He doesn't go backwards. Um, there's some changes in style. Like right there, he throws his combinations, punches. There's a stop of the action. Usually, you can never get a punch in. That's, That's true. He was perpetual motion. That's true. Could it be because of the way he fought the last two times? He's trying to change everything. Um, psychological. This game is 90% psychologically, 10% physical. So you got to remember one thing. Psychologically, the question mark is: Is he scared to get knocked out? And Fuentes does have some pop in his hands. He's added a good, couple good overhand rights at a move Chocolatito back, but here comes Chocolatito. Well, the Fuentes is about to quit a second ago. He went all the way down to the ground. Yeah, it looked much. like he was sagging to the canvas. I wonder if he was hurt to a body shot or if there's just so much blood in his face he can't see anything and he's feeling overwhelmed. And then you also see him blowing his nose. So that he's been bleeding from the nose, bleeding from the right eyebrow. A bloody Moises Fuentes tonight in Las Vegas. It's only the third round. Chocolate Tito usually moved left and right and do a combination punch. He would go left and right and throw a punch. Like right there, throw a punch, and then move again, throw again. He never gave you a chance to throw punches. There is something changed in his style. I can see it. It's very evident. Could it be he's just trying to get a couple rounds and feel it out, maybe? That's not Chocolatito. That's not your style. So he's a, a buzzsaw. He's got to keep coming. Effective, effective, effective. Keep attacking. Or head maybe movement. he was a buzzsaw. Maybe that's not him anymore. Well, guess what? You change your style, you change your game, you have a chance of losing. We're going to find that out. Will the Chocolatito going to become that buzzsaw? Or has he completely changed his approach? Third round winding down. Chocolatito Gonzalez, Moises Fuentes in Las Vegas on the night of Canelo Triple G. Gonzalez is covered in blood. That is, I mean, that cut is just spurting blood. And there must be another cut on his face. There must be uh, his nose, but I mean, he is, it's, it's not just centered around the eye of Fuentes. It's the head and upper bodies of both fighters are covered in blood. Ringside of the T-Mobile Arena, Canelo Triple G. Tonight, the rematch. I'm Bethel Duran, Doug Fisher, the Flushing Flash, Kevin Kelly, watching Chocolatito Gonzalez, Moy Fuentes. And after this, it'll be David Lemieux against Spike O'Sullivan, Canada against Ireland. And the co-feature, El Tijuanero, Los Toros, Los Cholos, they're all ready to go with Chevale. And you have Jaime Munguia against the Canadian Brandon Cook. An excellent undercard tonight.
all working Circle. towards the way. The Circle main event. missed with the right cross, but he caught him with a beautiful left uppercut. That was one of his signature punches. He gets clipped himself with the right hand from Fuentes. Chocolatito putting punches together. Left, right, left combo with Fuentes' back to a corner. His corner was working really hard on the right eyebrow of Moises Fuentes. And that suffered the second round. Gonzalez is working really high, hard on that eye during the rounds. It's a target for him. Kevin, when you see a fighter cut like that, is that something you just want to attack or you got to pick your spots? Well, when a fighter's cut, I want to work on it. I'm going to go after that cut. I'm going to do everything in my power to sort of referee to stop the fight. Think about it. If you're going to fight 10 rounds, I'd rather fight four or five. <laughs> you have a guaranteed win. We're getting paid the same amount of money either way. You didn't get paid by rounds. You get paid by fight. Exactly. So that's the way it goes. So I think right now, if I was Gonzalez, I'm focusing on that cut big time. I like that Fuentes is aiming some of his shots to the body. You always want to do that with a, a fighter that has a lot of wear and tear on him, uh, especially a, a fighter that has battled the scales in the past, and, and Chocolatito has done that. Well, Fuentes is going to the body, as you can see. Smart move by him, trying to slow down Chocolatito. Chocolatito's coming forward, and he's applying a lot of pressure. I think he's getting back to what he used to do. He's starting to show traces of it right now. I see the technique in his punches. He has the more, the straighter and the sharper. He has the better technique on his power shots than Fuentes does. Fuentes uh, tends to wing most of his power shots. Yeah, Fuentes throws punches kind of with a slapping motion, like right there. Oh, he's slapping, not a power shot motion. Uh, bring your punches right back. Fuentes spending most of this fight with his back against the ropes with his corners telling him every single round, don't do that. Yeah, Gonzalez wants to get you up against the ropes or in a corner. That's where he does his damage. I'm starting to see some swelling in the face of Gonzalez, by the way. A body shot to the right. Upstairs is Gonzalez. Went to swing and a miss. And he's pawing at that blood. It's really affecting his vision now. As, as Boy went to every chance he can to get the blood away from his eyes, he's doing that. Well, the doctor comes in. That's urgency right there. So that's what you want. But Fuentes fighting back, I give him a lot of credit with that major cut dripping down to his eye. All upstairs, Mr. Lopito finally goes to the body a couple times. Keeping that high guard is Roman Gonzalez. More blood on the right eye as Chocolatito has the bullseye. He has the target going after it. Gonzalez has dropped some beautiful combinations. I love the hook to the body, the hook to the head. I like the uppercuts from both hands. His left uppercut is, is beautiful. And you do see some swelling underneath the left eye of Chocolatito. And sometimes his cheeks swell, his jaw swells during fights. Even fights that he's dominated that have gone the distance. I've seen that happen with him. All around for the fighter from Nicaragua. El Tapatio, Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico. Saul Canelo Alvarez walking in to the T-Mobile Arena. His brand, no boxing, no life. That's what we've been wearing all week long. His trainer, Eddie Reynoso, next to him. Chepo Reynoso behind him. The gentleman who have brought him up since he was an amateur. His professional career at 15. And now a pay-per-view star as a rematch tonight against Gennady Golovkin. That's coming up later on this evening in Las Vegas. Very stern-looking Canelo. Yeah, he looks, he, he, looks, um, he looks relaxed, but there's more focus than we saw from yeah. him when he was walking into the weigh-in. He was sort of loosey-goosey. A slight smile there, but um, he's going to get his, his, his fighting mask on. It's, it's all business from here on out. No, no, no. Oh. Hi, brother. Oh, yeah. Cinco. Let's go. Johnny Lobs watching us in Brooklyn, New York, brings up a point. Hey, Chocolatito, not used to being an undercard fighter either. I mean, he's headlined a bunch of his own shows. How, how's that different, Kelly, when you, your role has switched? Well, it happens with music groups, too. You got a number one time, Britney Spears was the undercard of uh, NSYNC, right? All right. And she outperformed them. So what happens is roles change. It's just like in boxing. Triple G was the main event. Chocolatito was the co-main event. And then Chocolatito literally carries on weight. 
um, it feels a little bit degrading sometimes, right? Because you got to work your way back up. So he understands that after his last two performances that he's got to work his way back in position. So it's only right that, you know, he's where, where he's at right now, but it makes him hungry. I like the underdog. I like being the underdog. I've been the underdog since day one. So this is come what it's up, about. Up, Does it look like Gonzalez is fighting like an underdog? Like he's, he's fighting uh, to stay in boxing, to, to keep his career going? Oh, that answers your question. There it is, the Chocolatito looking over him. What a drop, and it is over. Oh my Roman God. Chocolatito Gonzalez. Doug, you answered your own question. No, Chocolatito answered that question in emphatic, uh, oh my gosh, emphatic fashion. Uh, he's worried about it, but was, was that like a, a just a perfect right hand? Almost like an overhand right? Looked like a hook. It looked like a hook to me. Was it? I gotta see a replay. Oh my goodness. But it wasn't like it was he got blindsided. He didn't have him in any kind of danger at that point. He just landed the perfect shot. That's all you need. See, people understand something. When we throw punches as a fighter, the punches that I've knocked many men out, I never planned or programmed. Those are the punches that I threw just in a mix of punches, and it landed. Okay, so when we throw punches, we throw punches threes and fours. One of them might catch you and hurt you, but I didn't plan on knocking you out. So where's the shock to everybody else? I got to see how this happened. Got him in a corner. That's where he likes his opponent. He missed with the right uppercut. He comes back with a hook to the temple. And a, a, a right cross. He and buckled. the lights went out. He buckled. Well, the punch you don't see is what knocks you out. They were about, I would say, they're, like he's, they're there he's right on it. top of him, though. He is so close. Oh, straight. Oh, 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 what a right hook. hand. A solid right hand. That's a nice right hook. The way it landed. I mean, punches that you don't see is what knocks you out. Those are the punches that knock the hook. As you see right here. So that's the distraction hook. right there, okay? The left hook. Now the right hand, you can see the left hand of Princess is down. And that's how he gets caught right on the chin. Was he hurt at all, do you think, from the from the left hook that landed? The left hook was just an abrasion. Yeah. That, that, that right hook, the left hook, that, that, that right hook that Gonzalez threw was just not even hard. It was just accurate. So I'm it wasn't sorry. about how hard it was thrown, how accurate it was thrown. Joe Martinez inside the ring as Moy Fuentes on his feet. Four seconds. Round number five, referee Robert Bird steps in, ends this contest. Your winner by TKO from Managua, Nicaragua, El Chocolatito Roman Gonzalez. His 39th knockout, emphatic, and what a shot! By Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez, his 47th victory as Moises Fuentes, a scary thing at the time, was on his back. Doctors jumped right over it. Robert Hurd didn't even count, just counted him out, waved the fight off. He, uh, Fuentes on his stool right now. The manner in which Fuentes collapsed to the canvas, the fight was over. Uh, he was not going to get up from that. Um, and if he was able to get up from that, he was going to be in a lot of danger uh, against an attacker with the polish and the experience of Ramon Chocolatito. Now, he doesn't have the form that w we saw two or three years yeah. ago, the, the relentless pressure and volume punching, but I like what I saw. He's still a good boxer. He can still do damage with his punches. He stays in this He stays in this game, and I think he is a you know, legit top five, top six junior Bantamweight. Kevin, the first couple rounds, we were talking like, hey, did he change his style? Is he completely different? Is he feeling him out? We don't know. That fourth round, that kind of power, that's what we've been used to with Chocolatito. That's the guy that you know so well. Yes, um, what I see now is that primarily he wants to attack now, okay? Um, he's more cautious. When you get knocked out, I think that psychologically takes an effect on you because you get knocked out, okay? You're careless and you caught. And the thing is, you got to pay attention to that. So he's more protective now. He's more, um, more accurate. He's, that, that right hook was amazing. Okay, uh, on the butt, right on the button. He caught a man off guard. Uh, he caught a man dropping his hands. He worked the body, kind of psyched him a little bit. So those things are the things that he's putting back together. He's actually resurrected his career, and he's changing what he does. And it's not like he dropped an average fighter. Moy Fuentes has been in some battles over the year, former minimal weight uh, champion. But the way that he knocked him out, Doug, Fuentes buckled over, went straight down. The way he knocked him out, you want to see him fight again. Yep. The manner in which he set up the knockout lets us know that he's changed.